Introducing The Master, a gripping TV series from 1984 that offers a roller coaster of emotions. Get ready for a journey filled with funny, shocking, and sad moments as you delve into the world of this timeless classic. Did you know there are many lesser-known facts and stories about this series that are sure to fascinate you? Keep your eyes peeled for those surprising tidbits. What qualities do you think make this TV series a lasting symbol of the industry? Dive into its storytelling, characters, and themes to uncover the answers. There's something about it that has stood the test of time, keeping audiences engaged for decades. Now it's your turn to share. What's your most cherished memory or personal experience related to this series? We'd love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. So don't hold back. Get ready for an unforgettable journey with the master where every episode brings new revelations and emotions. Let's explore together. A review of the Master TV series, the Master TV series, which aired in the 1980s, holds significance for many viewers, particularly those with a fondness for nostalgic television or martial arts themes. The show follows the adventures of a wise mentor and his apprentice as they navigate various challenges, often involving confrontations with ninjas and other adversaries in different towns. One viewer reminisces about childhood memories associated with the show, recalling how it inspired outdoor ninja play sessions with friends. Another reviewer, while acknowledging the series' attempt to tap into the martial arts trend popularized by figures like Chuck Norris, finds it lacking in comparison to similar productions of the era. Positives highlighted include Lee Van Cleef's portrayal of the titular character, the intriguing storyline involving ninjas seeking retribution, and the quality of the introductory sequences. However, criticisms are also voiced, particularly regarding the formulaic nature of the plotlines, exaggerated martial arts sequences, and a perceived lack of depth in character development. Overall, opinions on the master vary. Some view it as a nostalgic gem worth revisiting for its entertainment value and martial arts themes, while others find it lacking in originality and depth compared to contemporaneous productions. Whether it resonates with individual viewers may depend on their affinity for 80s television and martial arts themes. In the UK, there was a notable rise in the interest of ninja throwing stars among teenage boys attributed to the Master series. This surge led to teachers reporting an increase in confiscations of poorly crafted metal stars made in school metalwork classes. Each episode following the pilot commenced with a recap of Lee Van Cleef's character backstory, seamlessly blending Timothy Van Patten's narration with flashbacks to pivotal scenes from the pilot episode. The antagonist, Okasa, has a compelling backstory as a former pupil of the protagonist, John Peter McAllister. Okasa seeks to kill McAllister and assume the role of the master ninja, driven by McAllister's decision to depart Japan in search of his unknown daughter in the United States. This explains Okasa's persistent pursuit of McAllister and his constant attempts on his life throughout their travels. Shokasagi, known for his role as the ninja villain Okasa in the series, reprised a similar villainous character in his debut film, Enter the Ninja, released three years prior. In both instances, he portrayed an evil black ninja, showcasing a consistent theme in his early career. Adding a familial touch to the series, Kane Kasagi, the real-life son of Sho Kasagi, makes an appearance in the final episode. This isn't the first time father and son shared the screen as they previously acted together in Revenge of the Ninja, a film that also featured Ashley Ferrer, an actress who later appeared in The Master. The inception of the series was spurred by the success of Enter the Ninja in 1981, starring Sho Kasagi and Franco Nero. This film triumphed under canon films and spawned sequels, including Revenge of the Ninja and Ninja 3 The Domination. The martial arts trend continued with American Ninja and its sequels, as well as three more ninja films starring Sho Kasugi Prey for Death, Nine Deaths of the Ninja, and Rage of Honor. The influence of Enter the Ninja on the Master is evident, not only in Sho Kasugi's casting, but also in the broader context of the martial arts theme that prevailed in both projects. This connection adds an intriguing layer to the series, emphasizing its roots in the successful formula established by earlier films. In summary, familial ties and a martial arts legacy intertwine in the master. Shokasugi's portrayal of Alcasa echoes his earlier villainous role, and the inclusion of his son Kane Kasugi adds a personal dimension to the series. The show's roots in the success of Enter the Ninja further solidify its place in the martial arts genre of the 1980s. This connection between family, martial arts, and cinematic success underscores the series' significance in the context of its time.
In an interesting turn of events, Ashley Ferrer, featured in the episode Failure to Communicate, has a connection with Sho Kasugi, the main villain in the show. Notably, both actors appeared together in Revenge of the Ninja, where Ferrer's character was named Kathy, similar to her character's name, Kathy, in The Master. The connection between characters and actors adds a subtle layer of familiarity to the series. The butterfly medallion worn by McAllister holds significance as it represents his family in Japan. This emblem becomes a symbol of his family's history, as any ninja who defeats him could claim it and erase that legacy. Surprisingly, the medallion is only taken from McAllister by the female ninja, Allison Grant, during her revelation as Okasa's ninjutsu student. Only through McAllister's resilience is the medallion reclaimed, emphasizing its familial and symbolic weight in the narrative. The wheels of the show roll in a vehicle that bears a striking resemblance to the van featured in the A-Team, albeit with different striping. Coincidentally, both shows were part of the NBC lineup in 1984, hinting at a shared aesthetic in television production during that period. This detail adds a layer of contextual similarity between two seemingly disparate series. The show's narrative unfolds with unexpected connections, weaving threads that tie characters and actors together. From shared roles in other projects to the symbolism of a medallion, the series delves into layers beyond the surface. These subtleties contribute to the overall story, offering viewers more than just martial arts action. In combat scenes with Lee Van Cleef, Sho Kasugi seamlessly steps into the action, identifiable by his distinct height, poses, intense gaze, and characteristic yells. The nuanced differences in their fighting styles add depth to Okasa's portrayal by Kasugi, enriching the martial arts dynamics of the series. Contrary to the ninja ethos of invisibility, Van Cleef's character often wears his ninja attire in public like at a Halloween party or during an arrest, challenging the traditional ninja mystique. Instances where he appears on a newspaper's front page and undergoes interrogation while clad in his uniform underscore the unconventional choices made in the show's narrative. Demi Moore's presence in the pilot episode aligns with her role in the film Blame It on Rio, released around the same time as the show's NBC premiere in January 1984. This synchronicity adds a layer of interconnectedness to the entertainment scene of that period. The familial aspect deepens with show Kasuga's son, Kane Kasugi, making a notable appearance in the final episode, marking a unique collaboration between father and son in both the show and their previous venture, Revenge of the Ninja. This family tie adds a personal touch to the series, resonating with the broader martial arts history evident in the show. Ashley Ferrer's connection with Sho Kasugi in Revenge of the Ninja carries over to the master, reinforcing subtle links between characters and actors. The symbolism of the butterfly medallion representing McAllister's family becomes a focal point, emphasizing familial and symbolic weight within the narrative. A peculiar similarity arises with the show's vehicle, reminiscent of the A-Team's van, suggesting a shared aesthetic in television production during 1984 when both series aired on NBC. This detail introduces an interesting contextual parallel, highlighting unexpected connections in the TV landscape of that era. As the show unfolds, it weaves together these subtle connections, providing viewers with more than just martial arts action. The series embraces a dynamic narrative, enriched by familial ties, actor connections, and symbolic elements, making it a distinctive piece in the martial arts genre of the 1980s.